Good morning. It's Saturday, June 7th. Saturday, June 7th, 2014 in Sarasota, Florida at about 9.20 in the morning. There is a lot of energy going through me right now and I um, want to try to get some of this out for myself. Likely it'll be just for me. Um, without a doubt, this is centering around... Well, shit, I can never isolate one thing. It's never just one thing. It's always, it's always connected, right? And, and in, in my world, it's connected to usually dozens of things. I can tie how I'm feeling in any given moment to it easily at least a dozen different aspects of my present life. It's never, ever, ever, ever just about what the surface, like... Uh, for example, something going on that happens in your relationship, generally you're feeling about what's going on in the relationship, good, bad, and however you're feeling, it's not just pertaining to the relationship, in quotes, you know, it's, it's pertaining to what's going on in your work life, it's pertaining to what's going on in your, uh, you know, in family life, it, it pertains to all sorts of different aspects of who you are. And the more aspects of who you are that you are living, i.e. most people just have a family life and a work life. And they're very distinct. And if one bleeds over into the other, it's work bleeding into personal way, 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 way more than personal has been allowed to bleed into the work environment. Because God forbid, if personal bleeds crosses that very thin line of, you know, that's personal, it doesn't belong in the work environment, look out, right? I was personally reprimanded from, for that. Uh, most recently, while I was employed at Microsoft, and it was done very professionally, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a big deal. It was just... Um, and that I could talk about possibly in another podcast. And it was a very, I have a journal entry from that evening. It was a very powerful experience for me because I, I wasn't taking it personally for the first time. I, I was able to receive it and understand their perspective. It doesn't mean I agreed with it, uh, but I understood in their game, in that corporate game, in that world of which I've never fit, how much I allowed my emotion to be shown in the work environment was not appropriate. And so by their rules, I was, I was, I was crossing the line and making others uncomfortable. Essentially, it was making others uncomfortable. Again, I don't agree with that at all, but no longer did I take it personally. And that right there was a conscious experience of maturing for me and maturing in the sense of recognizing that there are infinite takes, infinite sort of sets of rules. We all have our own rules for ourselves. Now there are greater momentum of, of what we can call our mainstream way. Enough of us have agreed in many different ways, right? But ultimately, energetically, we've agreed that to certain you know, rules and laws that have become mainstream. But we all have our personal rules and our personal laws. And nobody has the right to tell us what we define those and want those to be for ourselves. And if you're playing in a game where you don't like the rules, we seem to think that there's only sort of one game going on out there. If, if you think of it as a game at all, because you say that to some people and they get offended, they take personal offense because they think you're making light of the very real conflicts, very real sort of tragedies and injustices that, you know, they perceive to be going on. And I'm not saying I, that those things don't exist. I'm just saying it's all based on perspective. And yes, it is all a game. And ultimately, it's a game of energy. And I'm not going to go on to that tangent. I'm going to come back to the Microsoft one where I was consciously, consciously aware of the maturing process, namely in the sense of maturing in a, to not take something personally. Don't take it personally. Give others the space to have their beliefs, their opinions, and then take responsibility for the fact that you always have a choice. 
You have a choice all the time. We have a choice. We are responsible for our own lives. You can choose to leave a job if you don't like the rules of that job. You can choose to leave a relationship if you don't like the way you feel and you don't think it can change. You know, in a relationship, you can choose to leave. You can, we make choices. We have control over our own lives. We are the only ones that have control over our own lives. So, in this maturing process, um, of course, this was amidst many very new things taking place at a brand new level of awareness and a level of consciousness. Speaking of how I went through this process in the environment that I did at Microsoft, I could I could write a, a whole. I will likely be writing a book on the experience just at Microsoft alone. Um, and, and, and that time of my life, my first year in Seattle, my first year after my awakening of my awakening, like everything was heightened. My senses and experiences and emotions were on full, they, I was wide open and I've always been a, such an open person. One of the things I've had to learn is how to not, to not be compassionate, of course, to maintain compassion, but to not absorb the, the energy of the sadness or the struggle of so many others, because that's what I've done my whole life. I've, I've sort of taken all of that in and, um, as a highly sensitive being. And so I come off, off of my awakening. And even though it was all generally positive, I mean, like, like I was, I was every single day, I was trying to follow for myself at that time, although it happened very quickly, it did not take more than a few months, the four rules that I sort of adopted from Sri and Kira. You know, believing and knowing that we're all connected, so it's being in union with yourself and then extrapolating out to sort of being in, in union with your environment, your home environment, your work environment, all the different you know environments in which we live and play. So being in union, the concept of absolutely no judgment, Starting first and foremost with yourself, the concept of unconditional love, again, starting first and foremost with yourself, and then the concept of complete surrender and having faith in this, this higher energy of which we are all just one expression, one part in this physical life. Those were my four rules. I got, like I said, they were used in a different context in one of the, in the first spiritual book that I read that sort of launched all of this by Sri Ramka and Kira Ra, two a, a sort of a, a very powerful spiritual couple and very strong influence in my spiritual life in the past four years. And so I, I kind of adopted those four things that they used in a slightly different context as my four rules to the, to the new game, what I started to label as the new game. And why do I use, and this sort of brings me back to what prompted me to start the podcast or this recording to begin with this morning, it brings me back to the concept of a game. Why am I, why is that my most natural sort of analogy? Is it because it speaks to the greatest masses in our mainstream? And ultimately, if I want to, if I believe I'm creating at least one ultimate story or one story that can reach that is possible to go mainstream. And again, I don't need it to go mainstream for the normal reasons you want something to go mainstream. Most people business-wise want something to go mainstream and want something to go big because they're obsessed with their bottom line and getting more money and getting more, you know, bigger and bigger and better, bigger and better by virtue of, again, acquiring and expanding out, acquiring more, building more, and most importantly and most notably, having more money having more money. That is not the foundation upon which my whole world is based. I'm not, my currency is not money. I understand and know, I know, understand, believe, or I guess it would be, I believe, I know, so I believe, and therefore I understand that money is just, it's just energy, okay? It's just energy. We've made it the be all, end all sort of uh, uh, manifestation of our energy, but it's just one of infinite ways that energy sort of expresses itself, if you will. My world is all about positive energy. That's my, that's my currency. Okay. That's what I've got within me. Uh, and, 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 and I know it's an infinite, we have an infinite supply of positive energy. We have infinite immediate access to all that is the power of God, the power of light, the power of the source within us. We have access to that all the time. 
Okay, so follow me here. If my currency is something that is infinite, unlimited, and that every single human being has the same equal access to, how is that as your foundation for a world not going to produce a drastically different place? Like a hundred and like, so, and, and in our way of explaining things in our time, space, dimension here and with mathematics, the language of mathematics, a common way of explaining complete opposites. One way, one of the more common ways is talking about it like in the degrees of a circle. 360 degrees from the point of where you are brings you right back to where you are. 180 degrees, however, half of that distance takes you across the line, across, if you can envision a circle, across that, the, the, um, gosh, I'm thinking of the, what's the whole line? The radius is half the line. I'm drawing a blank on, on the ma my math terms here, my geometry terms. But 180 degrees in the opposite direction is one of the most common ways we describe something that is completely different. Like you can't get more different. I am telling you the world I know, the world I believe in, and the world that I have truly been creating in my mind since I was six years old at, at, a, at a damn near conscious level, very conscious for a young person from about six to 14, and then almost knowing my consciousness was sort of being darkened by my life circumstances, but I didn't know what to do about it. And so I went real dark. I went real dark pretty quickly at my core, but had to keep up the facade because of my people-pleasing, perfectionist sort of all that story that is not unfamiliar, right? That's another very familiar story for all of us. How many people in your world truly know like what, what you're feeling at your depths, right? We hold a lot back. And this is, this is I'm going off on too many fucking tangents. The power that what I got out that for the first time was sort of really getting this succinct. I'm trying to identify the most succinct story. I just read a quote that said something like, anybody can make something simple, complicated. We do that all the time. We've mastered that as a species and most of us as individuals are masters, masters at making something simply simple, complicated. What takes real innovation, what takes real creativity, what takes real imagination? And I will say real connection. I'd say talent and skill, but ultimately, if, if, if you have a desire, you've got access to the skill set that you need to achieve said desire. So really, all of us could have this, this skill, but it results from a tremendous connection. I, and I just completely lost, where did that, where was I going with that? The connection, the connection, the connection, um, infinite. Oh, shit, what was I just saying? Oh, 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 what takes real innovation, what takes real cre creativity and imagination is making the complex simple. And, and then, you know, I, I, God, I was a literal teacher and coach. And I started to get back to the tangent that started this podcast, talking about why I'm using the analogy of games. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Okay. Quick, quick. How can I do this succinctly? Okay. Analogy of games. There's lots of different analogies. I know I'm writing lots of different stories, writing in quotations, a lot of different types of stories. They're going to be presented via a number of different mediums. And I predict each sort of medium will generally apply or, or, or resonate with certain populations, right? Like I, I know the vibe of youth. I know the vibe of older people. I know the vibe of more, you know, conservative people. Like it's, it's just pitching it. But I do know that there is at least one story. And I dare say it is the grand story that ties all these other stories together. That story I know is supposed to be one that is able to be applied to everybody. Like its purpose is to be able to be my, what I'm striving for is to be able to explain this awakening to in such a way to lay it out logically in such a way with my words 
that if you are a bright person in this life, meaning academically, like you tend to be labeled or have experienced what we label as a, you know, you're a highly intellectual person. Intellectual people can understand logic. If the only reason, if they're not getting something or they're getting, you know, it's because they're, it's triggering. Because logic, you don't have to believe the premises to step through what logic is. And the ones that most that I'm talking about are the people that, that are likely not vibing with this awakening energy yet, either not believing in it, not wanting to, not needing to, because they already live substantially happy lives, and that's fine, that's cool, that's great, I'm not judging any of it. I just know that those people tend to have positions in this world that are literally, literally able to change this physical world. I am talking about, I know IRS agent, I know a U.S. Marshal, I know a Secret Service agent, I know, uh, you know, vice presidents of some of the biggest companies in the world, people in Rotary, doctors galore, lawyers galore, very, very bright people, very, very successful people. I definitely have, I would say, at least one or two of the real 1% that people refer to in terms of the money in my direct network. I, I, that, and that is why this is such an important story. That is what is so, has been so challenging for me is that I know that, well, first, just by living it, just by living it, I know I've got the attention of these people. I know that. I know that for a fact. I know it for a fact. I have multiple people's attention at Microsoft, meaning they, now they're, most of the people are still keeping a pretty far distance from me because that is how drastically different I, I'm doing all of this. I am, I'm breaking, I'm not breaking every rule of the present day paradigm. I'm creating a brand new game with its own rules. So of course it's going to appear as if I'm breaking all the rules of this game because essentially I am. Because this game is ridiculous. Like, how are we still agreeing to play this game? And I, if you still wanna play this game after you hear about the game that, I, that exists and that there are people, other people other than me playing it, but you see, you gotta go on your own hero's journey to go to mingle with those people. Like, I've got, I'm on this journey. I have been on this ridiculously insane conscious journey now for four years where I leapt, where I put all in on my life. I had to wave the white flag. I had to, because nothing made sense of how unhappy and unfulfilled my life was, given my status, if you will, given my intellectual, my degrees, my jobs. I was miserable. I had to wave the right flag. And what I learned was there was a whole new game that I had no idea exists. I know it exists. I'm telling you, it exists for anybody that wants to believe it. And I can't in any way figure out why logically, why anybody would want to still play this game of greed, of war, of poverty consciousness, of a belief in lack, of negativity, of blame, of hate, all of that bullshit. How can anybody choose that world if they actually are shown an example of a drastically different world being available right now if you make the choice to believe it? But you got to make the choice and do the work. So I'm not saying you'll be able to see it and it's going to be crystal clear. Of course it's not especially to those who are really resistant for one reason or another to this energy, who really don't care or want to care about this possible shift. Because it, because believe me, of course it's going to be threatening. Of course it's going to be threatening to the most successful in this old game. Because they're gonna, their first thought's going to be, fuck, wait, I don't want to know that there's a new game, especially because this old game's all about competition. So the first thing they'll be is that, that, that need to compete that need to be better, they don't yet understand, they don't truly believe at their core and understand it's not about competition. The grand winners of this life game are the ones who understand we are all connected. Everything is connected. You can no longer get away with, it's just my job. Bullshit, it's just your job. It, it, that's bullshit. That is a pussy way. Sorry for the language, but it is. It is a weak, weak way to put the blame on somebody else and not take responsibility. 
Not take responsibility for the fact that you are, it doesn't matter that it's work. You are still a part of doing something out in the world. And it's your responsibility to have a knowledge and awareness of what you're a part of. And it's your choice to decide then if you want to be a part of that. And that goes for every single belief that we hold. Do you want to play? This game has sort of been forced upon us, if you will, by our parents and by society, and nobody was doing it consciously. It's the momentum of it all. But no one's ever really understood, at least not on a mass level, to be able to really get people and guide them back to the power that's within themselves. We have entire systems. Our entire global system is based on a network of politics and government that takes us 100% away from our own individual responsibility and freedoms and gives all that power to these people that we elect. That's bullshit. That whole system is tremendously limiting. And I'm telling you, God, too many tangents, too many tangents. I come back to, I know I am weaving together one story, one story that's going to bring all the others together. And I know it's a love story. It's absolutely a love story. And I know that the way to speak to the most masses is sports. And it also happens to be no accident that I was an enormous, a huge athlete. And I used to pay attention a lot more than I do. I barely pay attention at all now to anything outside my own immediate world every single day. I don't, I don't care about that stuff anymore. Why would I ever care about anybody else's life more than my own when my own has become what we think we, you know, like, it's so odd to me. We go to the movies and we're like, we want our lives to be like the movies. They are. Like, live your own movie. That's what we are here to do. That's what you're already doing. It's how you, what you put the focus on and how you frame it. All to say, I know I'm going to frame this big story in the likes of a game because that's going to reach the most people. And in order to reach the most people, you got to realize this is threatening stuff and on which level to whom it's threatening. And the people it's most threatening to are the people who have the ability in this paradigm to actually do more within the systems to very quickly adapt our systems, to expand and evolve our systems, i.e. creating new ones, okay, creating new ones from a new foundational pattern. You cannot create new ones from the same fucking foundation. That's the whole Einstein quote. You cannot solve a problem from the same consciousness that created it. And I am telling you, from a business sense, from every sense, I understand the hell out of this new game. I get it, I get it, I get it. And I get it at a very high level. And that the way, to, and, and I don't need to prove it to anybody for myself, not at all. Finally, I. I I, I was doing that, trying very hard, way too hard to do that for the whole first year before I recognized how, how, a few, what, what, how that was just shooting myself in the foot. It's not about convincing or proving. But the reason why is because in this old paradigm, it's still seen as believing. And if I can provide something that is seen, that is a real thing, then all of a sudden that opens up even if it's only a little hole, but it's, if it's enough of an example, if it's a powerful enough example, it can blow open the energy of belief. Now all of a sudden, tons of people theoretically could jump their belief of creating a new world, like again, like off the charts with if the example, if the real life example was big enough, and I'm telling you, my real life example is big enough. The reason why it's big enough is because it's not just me. I have lived a life so far beyond my own individual life. Like my genuine love, concern, respect, admiration, desire for like my understanding of how it really, I've wanted nothing than to have a massive team engaging in the world in the way that basically in the way that I was engaging in the world in eighth grade. And that brings me to what turned this on. Mark LaPointe's retirement from Central Middle School and the knocking down of Central Middle School. And arguably, it's no, there's no argument. Prior to this time in my life, that was the absolute most poor, powerful time in my life. That eighth grade class was not accidental, not coincidental. How powerful that class was. I was the class president. We, like, there is so much tied to 
central. And me even seeing that last night, I'm not on Facebook that much. I, I'm, I'm growing less and less patient with it. Like I really, if it wasn't for quote unquote work purposes, I wouldn't be on Facebook at all right now. Like I, I really am eager to, although I do like having the direct contact, like I, but I don't, I get, it's hard not to get sucked into the whole watching the stream of everything else. And it's just, I don't like the energy of it. It's not good. So I know I can feel myself beginning my time with Facebook, at least to the extent that it has been since 2009, which has not been anywhere near what most people's uh, experience with it is, but mine has been more than I desire, is definitely coming to an end. And, but me happening to see a friend, and not even a particularly close friend, but a Facebook friend, post a Mark LaPointe, an announcement of this last night was pretty crazy um, that I happened to see that. And then it was all over my email today. I had a very two very, very close middle school friends also reach out to me to make sure that I had seen that article. And, um, and then that triggered, oh my God, I gotta reach out to LaPointe. And then that triggered you know, my 20th high school reunions coming up. And I don't really have an interest in going to that, but I have an enormous interest in, in doing something before they knock Central down. I would love to have an eighth grade reunion, an eighth grade Central Middle School um, and I guess really anybody that was there from the years of 1988 to 1990, you know, the years that we were there, because that group was so powerful. And so, and I'm just trying, and then everything else going on in my world, energetically, like reading all the signs, uh, how I've been feeling this past week in particular. I'm in my, the end of my third week of being back at the gym, which I've not been able to maintain for more than three weeks in the past year. That energy I know is key for me in terms of getting this creatively, like like what is screaming to get out of me, it's manifesting itself in my relationship 99% in beautiful ways, but in the big 1% area where it's not manifesting as I would desire in my relationship is pretty much driving me mad um, because again, it's just energy wanting to explode out of me that I'm resisting, I'm, I'm not letting go, I'm not seeing, it's not clear, it's not flowing, I'm not, I'm blocked somewhere. I can feel that I'm blocked somewhere. And going to somebody else to tell me where I'm blocked ain't gonna work, because nobody outside of me has any clue who I, re like what is all really going on within me. Oh God, there is, there is so much coming together. I, I, Oh my, so many things I've been doing consciously and mostly within my thought patterns because more than anything for the past three and a half years, I have been rewiring my brain. Rewire, literally rewiring my brain. And I'm telling you, I think I can explain to others. Now granted, it's gonna take just jumping in with people and starting as a quote unquote life coach and business like, but I am, I am certain with my own experience because my own experience has always taken into consideration everybody else's ahead of my own, which has given me an above average ridiculous skill set of being able to understand, empathize with, and identify with pretty much anybody outside of myself to the greatest extent that you can without experiencing what those people are experiencing. And we can never duplicate that. That's not, that's the whole fucking point. That's what we're trying to, we've got all these systems with people making rules and judging that then judge people's behaviors and they're based on nobody can tell you what to do or how you're, no one, no one. Our experiences are each 100% unique and different and none of us can ever understand what anybody else's experience is. Therefore, none of us has any right to judge, label, fucking, or, and certainly not restrict a behavior. And there is an earth waiting for us, those of us to, who want to believe it's possible for adults to act like adults in this life, what we label as an adult, a, a basically a being that's been in physical form for at least a couple of decades with proper adult guidance, and that means all of us coming back together, it takes a village so that we can make up the slack for adults who are parenting kids who maybe 
don't have all the, the best tools, but we need new ways of interacting. We certainly got to start with not taking everything so freaking personally to be able to have real conversations. Then we got to be able to fucking communicate honestly and, 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 and openly and, and, and giving the room and take and understanding that real harmony is experienced when we are absolutely valuing all the differences that exist. Not when we're trying to force everybody to be the fucking same because we have all these for the ease of the system. Everything needs to change. Everything. And I don't know about you, but I've been wanting everything to change around me for my whole life. So when I finally was ready to receive the message that that is real, that that's exactly what we came here to do, was to remember that we can create the world to be anything we want while well, I was off and running. And I am one potently high vibing energy to be off and running on such a thing. I'm telling you, there's a new game. There are millions of others, well maybe not millions. There are definitely thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of others but maybe not much more than that, actually. Playing the game at this level. But I can guarantee you that when you do play the game at this level, you can't help but have, and, and it depends on your circumstances, of course. If you're in a situation where you don't, where you really don't desire money, that aspect of the energy field won't be coming into you. I don't desire it for any of the reasons that the old paradigm does. I am desiring it simply because with money, in a relatively short period of time with money and God, a year is infinite. Like, you give me the kind of money that we give this system in our country, a billion dollars to the election process, you give me a billion dollars and I will show you world peace in a year. And of course that's not going to be just for what I'm doing. It can't be. But you, there are that many people who are ready, who know what really works out in the world, but there's no way they're ever going to be able to convince you in this old paradigm about because it's all gets stopped and hindered by money. And that is, that is the biggest energy flow of which I have a completely different relationship, truly. And I have proven that. I don't need to prove it for me, but I have proven that in the way I started my company with $50,000 approximately of pay it forward, substantial pay it forward investments into others. What company do you know that starts out giving money away, not by asking for money? So I'm not making shit, I've lived this. I was writing it at first and then I realized you can't, You've, I've got to live it and living what I believed and going through the process of having the experiences that would allow me to rewire the brain, my brain to be able to allow me to act according to the beliefs that I wanted to have. I had to practice those beliefs and I had, and the universe reads your energy and it will give you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to evaluate what you really believe and to make choices. We make choices every day. And that brings me back to how my middle school career, well, it was February of sixth grade, so it was well into the second you know, half of the year, and well into the school year, but when I got second place and behind another sixth grader, John Class, two sixth graders got first and second place in a speech contest called Destiny, Choice, Not Chance. Boy, do I understand, and, and oh, so... I just, okay, I'm glad I got this out. This would likely just be for me. I, 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 it's still not, I wanted to just touch base on, okay, LaPointe, the team analogy, the grand story, knowing I can feel all this within me. I, I, I the, the more powerful, this will be a more powerful story, less threatening, because that, all of which that big story needs to be, because most people are going to be very threatened in one way or another, because there is still right now a relatively small percentage of people that are already fully open to this and able to believe it. But there is an enormous percentage, enormous, like that is just waiting for the right energy, the right permission the right energetic permission for them to really let their minds go and accept what they've always, always known on some level. That, I mean, this is, it makes sense. Oh, fuck. So, 
I don't need no, I, I, no convincing, no proofing. I don't need to convince or prove anything to anyone because I don't know anybody, anybody that like nobody has even remotely in my world that I've met and what I know of their life. I don't know anybody that has even mildly attempted to do what I've had the courage and the strength to do. And I'm not putting anybody else down. I'm saying that because how in the world, why would I listen to anything anybody else has to say when none of them have had this journey? Because I, I, like, nobody from my, and I'm not saying those people aren't in my life. I'm saying I don't have a close enough relationship to know, like, you know, in, but the people whose opinions have been holding me back, the ones whose I value the most, you know, the closest, your, my closest family members, my longtime friends, I mean, those are the ones that sort of value the most, whose weight who I really wanted to convince and prove and show this to, none of them, to my knowledge, have ever, been, and, and again, it's not a better than, it's only because no one's done, no, none of us have ever done exactly what somebody else has done. But certainly, very few have gone against this paradigm, especially as it pertains to work, because most people can't. They have dependents, they have spouses, they have mortgages, they have careers. I didn't have any of that. I didn't have any of that. That's why I've said all along, this is my role right now. This is what I was meant to do in this life right now, is to tell this story on behalf of us all. And all those people in my old network know me well enough to know that I am not an eagle. Like, I need to stop trying to convince them. I, I, like, I just need to do this and let it flow. And trust that the end result, like, and I can feel it building. Last Friday, when I was watching some of my work from a year ago, until 3 in the morning. Holy shit, it blows me away because it's not me. It's just the conduit of this energy. So I just need to let go, just let go, just let go, just let go. So on that note, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to go work out, then I'm going to get some sun outside. I'm going to swim outside today. I haven't swum outside. I haven't gotten any sun yet this year. I'm going to go feel a little bit more like me and see what begins to come out. Oh, and B, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. You are my, oh, God. The beauty that we're going to continue to share with one another is truly something we're going to have to ease into because it, to, to imagine that it's only going to keep getting better between us when it is this good right now and everything on every level, everything I've ever dreamed in a relationship I, 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 and to know that it only gets better because it does only get better and it's not that you're wanting it to get better because right now sucks. It's that it, that's what it's meant to do. Like you're meant to sort of perfect and sort of this, this oh my God, then like I said, I'm in, like, there's a reason this is all unfolding, seemingly still slow to me. And I've been saying that all along, too. People are going to get it because this, it's, I'm coming into that much energy. And now with my, what I believe to be, who I believe to be, probably my twin flame. He is most certainly my soulmate right now in this way. Although I've got many soulmates in my life right now. But as a romantic partner, as an intimate partner, I do believe I might be with my soulmate of soulmates, my twin flame, the man with whom in this physical life I am meant, we are meant to walk side by side. I, I believe in that concept. I always have. I never thought that was just for the movies. I fucking believed it was real and possible. And in a different way, so does he. He, he kind of hates movies and that side of it. But, but he, he does, be, and I understand, it doesn't matter. All to say, off the charts and, and only going further. And I'm going to be able to teach it, explain it, and show others how to create it for themselves. So get ready to evolve, man. Get ready to evolve.